Okay, Revelation 12. So, people are starting to catch the other videos. I think y'all may have... I think some people have started watching the first one. So far, so good. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to say this is what it's going to be. I'm just trying to point out details of different things that I've seen, according to my experience, that relates to the things that I see in the book of Revelations. I'm absolutely not 100% right on this at all. Um, but like the like chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed is he who reads, and blessed is he who listens. <clears throat> so we're going to go through this. We're going to see what jumps out at us. See what speaks to us out of these chapters and what new revelations might come out of it um, towards me, towards you, towards anyone who's watching this. Because what I read may say something to me, but what you read may say something different to you because of your, based on your life experiences and what the, how the Spirit is working in you. So let's go through Revelation 12. Now, Revelation 12, um, I've told you guys before how when you read the book of Revelations, you can't read it in a straight line. Like, this is where everything's going to start, and this is where everything's going to end. You have to read through, and at a certain point, and sometimes it's hard to find where that point is, at a certain point, it backs back up, and those things are happening while the things that, that was were just in there were happening at the same time. In this chapter, you're going to see that happen. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about, where you're reading a series of things, and then all of a sudden it jumps back, and then you're reading different things, but it's happening at the same exact time. So, the woman, the child, and the dragon. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Now this is the, what's referred to as the Revelation 12 sign. This happened two years ago. In fact, we're coming up on the 23rd will be the two-year anniversary of this. This matched what we saw celestially. It fits. So... Pretty much universally, that's been accepted that that was that, what that was. Um, now, we've talked about other things, you know, celestial events that happen that tell the tale of things that are coming or prophecies being fulfilled. We know God uses celestial movements to dictate these things. We've seen it happen before in the Bible. Uh, verse 2, Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Now, there's other verses. In fact, in, in ten, chapter 10, it talked about no, no, no. It wasn't chapter 10. This was a different video. Talked about, uh, Old Testament talked about them being in, travailing in birth. Um, and this was referring to the government when I was talking about the Kaduri and the prophecies and all that kind of stuff. And those, some of those things I read in there where it, it referred to them being in, birth, in child labor. Um, this is interesting. There's a lot of things that link together and tell more of the story. This is why you have to do, do in-depth studies on these things. And another sign appeared in heaven. So we had Revelation 12 sign. So there should have been another sign right after that. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on its heads. So far, nobody has actually, I think, figured out exactly what this one was. Um, whether it was a celestial movement or what it was. After the Revel In fact, it was this year, the Aurora Borealis looked like a big green dragon. I gotta figure out how to turn that off. Um, it was a big green dragon in the Royal Borealis, and then it looked like a phoenix. And I saw the pictures; it really did look like that. But we don't know if that's what that sign was, because the Bible says it's a red dragon. Now we don't know, because we haven't 100% figured it out. Like I said, the Book of Revelations, the way we see it, it doesn't actually play out that way, because you can read it and go, okay, well that's a straight line read, but it's actually events happening at different time frames overlapping each other. So this sign of the great red dragon could actually appear in the, in the heavens, but it actually may be a future event. We won't know until we see it. A lot of times you don't know about prophecy until you see it happen. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now a lot of this story relates to Jesus and Israel. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Now this verse, a lot of people talk about, uh, this could be referring to the church, because when you go back into Revelation 6 or 7, chapter 6 or 7, I don't remember which one, where um, it talks about those 
the, the members of the church who are going to rule and reign with Christ will rule and reign with an iron rod. I forget what scripture I read it in. Um, so there's, there's referencing here that co corresponds together. So a lot of people say, well, this is the signification of Jesus being born. Well, Jesus has already been born. So in order for this to match with Jesus being born, the Revelation 12 sign would have had to have happened, you know, 4 BC, 2 BC, whatever it was when he was born. So we jump forward and we see this is the revelation for the end times. This matches now. So what would this be? Well, it would be the church being manifested. Um, it most most closely resembles that description. And it, and it fits. So she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Caught up goes to First Thessalonians. The catching away. Caught up. The rapture. So this very well could be the church talking about the church. Now, if that's the case, this goes back to Revelation 5. See how it jumps back? Time frame-wise. Now, a lot of people use this verse and say, see, if that's referring to the church, this is happening in the middle of the tribulation. Not necessarily. Like I said, you've got to use discernment on this, and you've got to take the references that it gives, that the references that we know, like caught up, and you got to go back and look and see what they mean elsewhere in the Bible, because there's secrets hidden in the, the back of the Bible, or the beginning of the Bible, to match this stuff here. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Now, this a lot of people take this to mean that Israel, because you read later where the same thing is referred to during the second half of the tribulation where a third of Israel is saved and they go and run to basically to Petra. The, the description given in the Bible matches where Petra is. And it's a city there. Um <coughs> And um, that place, it's been there forever. And it, it always stays up and everybody keeps it up and everything. Um, it's a big tourist attraction. And uh, you're going to read here in a little bit where it matches a lot of the stuff that's going on, that, that could go on there. But this is more re closely related to Israel, that Israel is going to run. Now, what we see is we see a possible big frame of time between these two events. Because if you count verse 5 as being the church and the church was caught up, then you go and look at verse 6. This is showing two different time frames. Now, a lot of people say this means the rapture is mid-trib. I don't know about that. Because then you got to go back to Revelation chapter 5 and you have to figure out you know, what chapter 5 is talking about. Is it only talking about 24 elders? Because it says 10,000 times 10,000, thousands and thousands. Same description that's given. In fact, all the descriptions about that group of people, it's given about the church being caught up. That which should signify that they were caught up beforehand. So this could be a big frame of time between these two events. This is what's warranted, why study is warranted into these things. There's so many other meanings that could, that could be part of this. And war broke out in heaven, verse 7. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Okay, so now the dragon is Satan. And they're fighting, and he's going to be cast down. Um, there's something interesting you're going to see here in just a second. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought, and the dragon and the dragon and the, his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So they were allowed back and forth into heaven up until this point. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So is this just happening? Or has this already happened? Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. What is this talking about? Because this, to me, this is referring to all different kinds of stuff in the Bible. Those before the rapture, before the tribulation, the last 2,000 years. When was Satan cast to earth? So this is, These are very interesting details to go and do deep study on. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now that verse indicates that maybe he was thrown down at the beginning of the tribulation, 
again, now you see it, it, the way it references is jumping backwards. So now we go back up here, and now we have to say, okay, well, this is talking about a preacher of rapture now. So which one is it? See? We have to stay on top of our game when we're reading this stuff. And, and don't get caught up in dogma or, or doctrine. Read it for what it says, and then apply it to real-life times. And if we find something we can't figure out, we just move on past it. The Lord will show us the truth on that stuff later. So now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. The, the woman is the Jews. The male child typically is referred to as Jesus. So now this verse indicates that he was cast down to earth 2,000 years ago. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time, times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now this jumps back forward again. Time, times, and half a time, that's three and a half years. That's the second three and a half years of the tribulation. Now, what we see is, for, at first in verse 13, we saw it jumping all the way back 2,000 years ago. Now in verse 14, it looks like it's at the halfway mark of the tribulation. So which is it? Did, was he cast down 2,000 years ago when Israel gave birth to the sun? Or was he cast down near the beginning or the midway point? And has the, uh, is this referring to the church? Because the church is the body of Christ. Just pointing out details. There's a whole lot of stuff that could be meaning different things here. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Petra floods. But it is a very narrow passageway that goes in there. It can be blocked up and protected from all sides and except for overhead. And we know that that one of the things they're going to do is they're going to dry up the Euphrates. It could be that that dam gets blown up during the war and that water rushes down there and spills over into Petra. could be that that's what that's referring to. We don't know. It's pointing out details. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Well, that could be an earthquake and a crevasse opening up. Who knows? And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So these are saved people. These is, this has saved Israel. Now we know the tribulation is for Israel, is to turn Israel back. Further in the, in the book of Revelation, we, talk, we see where um, it is a third of Israel is saved and they flee. Jesus tells them, you know, don't you know, pray that it's not on the Sabbath that you flee because it'll be harder on the Sabbath. But that y'all are going to have to run and go hide. And that refers back to this. So, see, you can't read Revelations in a straight line. Because you're going to read stuff that's going to go back and pertain to other stuff. The, the trick to Revelations is to write these things down. And every time, write details down. And every time you find a detail that relates to another one, write it next to it. And then read them all and then see what you see. It, it paints a much different picture and a much more dedicated timeline to what's actually going to happen. So we can see here how many times it, it seemed like it was jumping back and forth. Go back 2,000 years, come back up, go forward a little bit, come back again. So, and I, I'm, I'm pointing this stuff out because it's very important when you're reading this book with there's so much prophecy in here and so much allegory and, and representation. You have to keep in perspective a lot of this stuff either has happened, is happening, or will happen. And none of it is in a straight line run. Much of this is going to be happening at the same time as other things are going to be happening. You can pretty much take it and almost every chapter line them up side by side. So you're not reading in a straight line, you're reading from the top down. All the chapters at the same exact time. Pretty much. So it's important to dig deep into these things and pay close attention to what's being said here. It's a great story and it's almost, it's hard to put down. It's hard to stop reading because you want to know what's going to happen next. And some of the revelations that jump out really spark interest in doing more research and deeper research into this. Love you guys. Bless you guys in Jesus' name. Keep digging. Keep reading. Keep studying. And keep praying. Pray for revelation. Pray for understanding. So he'll help you with these things. I by no means understand all of it. I'm not even going to pretend that I do. I'm just reading through this because the Bible says we should. And I want to share as much as I can with you guys so you guys get inspired to go and dig more. Uh, we're learning about God, and this is important. It's important to him, and it's important to us and for us. I'll see you guys in the next video.